Welcome aboard, I'm your host, TCG Pirate King, aka The Gaming Governor. In this video, we will be discussing the tier list for all of the purple cards in the first wave of One Piece the Trading Card Game. This card list will be available on the One Piece official trading card game website, as links shown here on the top of the screen. As always on this channel, we sail on an ocean made of cardboard, and if you're looking for adventure on these card game seas, then all you must do is click the subscribe button and you'll become a full member of the crew. And now that that's all out of the way, let's dive in. Starting with Kaido, and as you can see, I really don't care whether or not it's a leader that's going to be manning a deck or a card that's going to be going into a deck. They're both going to be on this tier list, and I really don't care if they're dual colored or not, because a dual colored card is, in fact, a both dual colored card. So if you'd like to see what I rated these cards that are multicolored as when they were in blue, then please check out my blue card list. However, for this sake, I'm going to be I'm going to be referencing Kaido specifically as a purple card. Now, now, the way that we can look at this is Dawn 1, your turn. Once per turn, when your opponent's character is KO'd, add one card from your Dawn deck and set it as active. Now, this is an absolutely amazing effect in blue because this is going to give. This is going to give blah, 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 blah. Now, this is an absolutely amazing card in blue because this is going to give blue a little bit of ramp, ramp that blue did not have previously. However, when we look at this as a purple card, this is doing what purple just does in general, and it's nothing really all that special. That being said, I will give credit where credit is due, and this Kaido is doing really well as far as deck structure and the cards that support it, so I'm actually going to say, if you have it, play it. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at this crocodile. Now, this crocodile has not been very popular in the tournament circuit. However, I am a fan of crocodile, and we'll see how he stands using his ability in the purple decks. It says, when you activate an event, you may draw one card if you have four or less cards in your hand and haven't drawn a card using this leader's effect during this turn. Uh, I find that this is the kind of effect that is actually really good in both colors because it's nice to see draw in any kind of mechanic and the fact that there are so many good events that you're going to be playing in blue and in purple that this is actually a card that I can see actually doing really well. Now, as a mono purple, I'm not entirely sure. I would actually like to see how Croco Boy does as a mono purple in the tournaments. However, since he's been doing pretty poorly, I do have some faith for him, though. I'm not going to let him sit down here where everybody else has been putting him. I'm actually going to raise him up a little bit and say that he's at least good sometimes. He's good most times is what I'll say, not sometimes down here good most times i like his draw ability and there will always be a lot of event cards and there's going to be a more and more being printed before we do any of the actual cards we do have one more of the original leaders that were coming out here to be showcased and we have on your turn if you have 10 dawn cards on your field give all of your opponent's characters minus 1000 power uh this is a card that a lot of people were not very excited about in fact a lot of people were saying this was going to be a that card but boy were we actually surprised because mono purple is a strong enough co uh, color combination of cards that you can actually do some really cool stuff with this minus a thousand and it's a real nice tick when you start to think that every one of your red players are going to start being reduced the green players are going to be reduced you don't really have to worry too much about blue because blue is more defensive but when you think of the way that green and red just kind of try to take over the game with power this is the kind of thing that can put you just slightly over the edge it's not amazing, but it is something. I am actually going to put him below Crocodile, although I will admit in tournament circuits, people have been showing me that he is interesting, if nothing else. Now I've got Urashima. This card is very bland, but he is full art, so I like that. He is a 7 cost for 9,000 power, and that seems pretty standard for the uh, fair of purple. In fact, for most colors, actually, I feel like I can just send him out to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the other decks. Uh, I'm not very impressed with this just because... Since I know purple can go a little bit stronger for the uh, efficiency, I would probably n end up not playing this card unless I was doing a specific Land of Wano deck, maybe. I do like that it is a full art, but that's about where I'm going with this is not really much further. I'm going to put him right around in the crocodile area. He is good, but I... 
You know, I can't even. I'm going to put him down here with King. He's good, but he's just only good sometimes. I think that you guys can do a lot better with other cards in your rosters. Now, here's one that I'm really surprised about. This ulti has been getting very little notoriety, and I'm actually a big fan of this card. I was kind of surprised that I haven't been seeing a lot of people putting her in the deck. I like that she's only a two cost. Uh, I really don't care that she's only 3,000 power, because for that two extra cost, you are getting an extra rested Dawn. And that means, of course, it's going to untap on your next turn. But this is Mana Ramp in very efficient costing. In fact, I'm not entirely sure how many cards, if if really any, are ramping you earlier than turn three, and this is a turn one play, potentially, if you're on the defense. So I really like this card being able to ramp on turn one at least half of the time. I'm going to go ahead and place this card up here with Kaido. I'm not sure if it's going to make it up to the Yonko uh, list, but I do really think that this card needs to get another look at. It is 10 cost for 12,000 power to have the most powerful creature that ever existed. That's right, it is Emperor King Kaido himself. The four emperors, Animal Kingdom Pirates, on play, Dawn minus six. You may return the specified number of Dawn cards from your field to your Dawn deck. If your leader has the Animal Kingdom Pirates, which... At this stage in the game, if you're playing purple, there's a very good chance, unless you're playing crocodile... KO all characters other than this character. So you're not going to be playing this card outside of Animal Kingdom Pirates. However, inside of Animal Kingdom Pirates, this is your board wipe and heavy hitter all in one. I absolutely love this card. The minus six power on your Dawn does not matter because the minor setback that you're going to have from being able to build up your field again is going to be nothing in comparison to your opponent having to completely rebuild their board while they're staring down your 12,000th attack. You're going to be smacking them. You're going to be smacking them hard. And every time they try to hit you, they're going to lose a creature because of your beefy hitter. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy, you know what, it's probably fitting, and I'm going to go ahead and say that this guy is going to be our first Yonko, he can be dethroned, I'm not going to say this uh, a tier list is official until we finish the list, but we're going to go ahead and place him as the first big hitter, now the only thing is, is that I will say he is a Yonko if you are playing, ooh, see that just kind of ruins my qualifier if you ask me. I'm going to leave him up here with the addendum that he's most likely going to drop down one, and it's more of a prestige because he is an emperor. Next is Kiroshiru. On play, draw one card if you have eight or more Dawn cards on the field. Now, this is a ramp deck. Purple's going to be ramping you all day long. I am not too worried about having eight or more Dawn on the field. However, purple also will take away Dawn, and for that reason... There are so many times where, yes, you're going to be making more energy than anybody else. More Dawn's going to hit your field than anybody else. But you're also going to be paying that all the way back. So how often will you have eight or more Dawn cards on the field when you play this card? I actually don't see it happening. If this was a if you have six or more Dawn or even a five or more Dawn, I would be placing this card a lot higher. It is a really nice power because it is five for 6,000. But because you're only going to get 1,000 power when you discard it, because you're only going to get that draw if you have eight or more Dawn, which isn't going to be all the time. I'm going to say that this is going to probably be our first card right there in between Crocodile and Kaido at the 300 million mark. It is a great card. We'll call that mark the gold standard. It is a great card. However, it only fits in certain key circumstances. And honestly, I see its greatness shining much later on down the line when there are more ways to ramp yourself back up after you've paid up a whole bunch of Dawn. And now it is my honor and privilege to unveil King. I absolutely love this card. This is a fun card. I love this artwork. Oh my. On play... Dawn 2. You may return the specified number of Dawn cards from your field to your Dawn deck. KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 3 or less and one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 2 or less. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
I'm speculating here. I love this card because I can't wait for purple black right now. In fact, I'm actually excited for blue black and purple black because I think that black is going to be such a fun color because when you think about what this card's going to be able to do in that deck, and this is why I love speculating on an early card game because now this card has just gone even wilder when you think about how black is going to reduce the character's cost. You're going to be able to turn five cost into three cost, six cost into two cost. Why not, guys? I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'm getting kind of excited right now, but I can't help it. This card is just getting better every time I look at it. So I think that, in fact, this is going to bump down. And hey, look what happened over there. No, he's not going to bump down. But you know what? This guy's definitely going up because this is by far Mr. Hotness himself. I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy of this card just because I got to play him in blue and uh, black so badly. In fact, if they do a three color, can you imagine if they ever do a three color deck? Why wouldn't they? I'm going to be running blue, purple, black, and you guys will see it, and I'm going to love it, and this is going to be such a fun card to play. I can't wait to get my hands on a copy. He is definitely a Yonko. In fact, he makes this look like less of a Yonko just by comparison. I can't wait to see how this guy enjoys the upcoming meta to come. And this guy kind of just dropped on his own, didn't he? Well, we're fine with that. For me personally, this is a really powerful card. I really like Queen. Uh, on play, minus one Dawn, you may return the specified number of Dawn, which is that one. You This card gains Rush during the turn. So you're going to get to play this card the turn you... You're going to get to attack with this card the turn you play it. Now, I know it's going to cost seven, uh, potentially. Um... But then again, it says from your from the field to your you may return the specified number of cards from your yeah from your field to the deck. So honestly, it could be one you've already used, you know. So it cost it six. You get a rested dawn. You throw it away. So yeah, now you're down to five dawn. On your next turn, you're still going to have seven. But when you attack with this five thousand, you can reduce give one of your opponent's characters minus two thousand during this turn. You can reduce a blocker. You can reduce a power hitter that is now uh, easy pickings for another one of your attackers. This guy is going to get through and attack the opponent, sure. But that minus 2,000, that is going to be what comes in handy so much. I highly think that this card has not seen the last of his days. Uh, I think some people have been playing him in some of the tournament decks. I really like what he's capable of doing. I would not play him in a deck that is paying a lot of your dawn but since he himself is only a minus one uh if you were doing a specific ramp deck that just keeps pushing out how much you have then this is exactly the kind of card that i would like to play in that kind of deck and i think that i could easily see myself putting it up here purple is a pretty powerful color as you can see i really like a lot of what they can do all right so the next three cards we're actually going to just breeze on through because they are the kurizumi cycle uh on play reveal artificial devil fruit smiley from your deck added to your hand then shuffle your deck uh this is actually going to tie in with an event card that we'll get to later on is only good for that one event card uh kurizumi clan type characters other than this card kurizumi semimaru cannot be ko'd in battle so this is only a card that's going to be beneficial if you're playing the other card and this card kurizumi higarashi blocker after your opponent declares an attack you may rest this card to make it the new target of the attack so this is kind of cool because this card will basically defend all of your other cards and cannot be KO'd in battle so long as this card is on the field and this card is just going to give you your artificial devil smileys which we'll have to tie that in with another card later as far as these two cards as a combo is kind of fun and interesting and I can see a little lockout happening right there but it is so restrictive that you that they only really work with each other I mean this kind of is just a nice blocker but this card only really works with this one blocker in your deck. Um, I think these are very limiting cards. I'm going to give this guy down here, put this one down here with him. And just because it's a blocker, I could see that. Um, in fact, yeah, that's where I'm going to say very, very, very low tier. But now that we've finished talking about those three cards, we can talk about Sasaki, and I actually really like this card. I, I can't wait to put this card into some of my deck builds. When attacking, you may trash a card from your hand, add one card from your Dawn deck, and rest it. Now, 
I could see myself playing this in a uh, back to hand strategy where I can start returning cards from my deck to my from, from sorry from my uh, trash pile to my hand, and uh, then all of a sudden this card becomes just a wonderful way to continuously grow. Uh, your Dawn deck, and I like that it activates more than once instead of just being on the play, and I also like that it gives a plus 2,000 bonus. This is a really nice card, and I can easily see myself playing it in a lot of decks. I like it. Uh, if you have it, play it. Anybody else feeling the need for muscles? I feel like Jack is just too jacked. Anyway, he's 3 for 4,000. When attacking... You, for one Dawn, you may return the specified number of Dawn cards from your field to the Dawn deck. Your opponent trashes one card from their hand. This is a fine card. I like it because it is a 4,000 attack. It can come out as early as turn 2. If you're on turn 1, you get your first. Turn 2, you get up to 3. And if you're the second player, still, you have 2 Dawn. And then on your second turn, you have 4. So you are going to consistently get this out, it seems, on turn 2, which is a nice play. When it attacks, which is always going to be turn 3. So on turn 3, you got to think, let's see here. Let's say I have two of these in the hand, right? So I put one on the field, and then I still have uh, another leftover uh, Dawn. So on my next turn, not that I'm going to really do with that. But on my next turn, I'm going to play the other Jack, let's say. And then I can attack with this guy. Well, I still have three more Dawn left over, right? I can play another one. It's all of a sudden, this is so mana efficient for the Dawn. I really like this card. I like that it does force your opponent to trash cards in their hand because you're limiting their resources at that point. And I like the idea of taking away things that your opponent can play with. So I think I'm going to take this jacked Jack and I don't really want him too high. In fact, I think he's going to be our first 300 million bounty, which is kind of fitting that uh, so far we've got queen and king just kind of in that order, you know. Now, I do really like this alternate artwork, and sometimes I have given uh, higher rankings to cards just for the sake of alternate artworks, but I think I'm going to leave Jack right here as a nice little representation of this is the golden standard, we're going to go ahead and call this. Call it a curse or not, but every time I play this card on turn two, I'm going to be playing that damn song that he played at Saba Odi Island Archipelago against uh, Kizaru. I just got that jam stuck in my head. Now, as far as your opponent having to face off against this guy he is pretty efficient coming in on turn two for 6,000 so it's nice that he gets to just go ahead and swing however when you compare him to other cards that we've had in the format I think that he doesn't really stack up really well against cards like Jack against Queen I think that he's just slightly weaker than them because at least these guys although they do sacrifice a little bit of that uh, mana efficiency actually no what am I even talking about let's look back let's take a look at Jack look at that three for four thousand Four for 6,000. So you are sacrificing power. However, you're getting this effect that's going to force your opponent to trash a card. All you got to do is pay that extra mana every turn. You're in purple. You're totally having fun with that card. Whereas this card's just doing the attacks. You're kind of just doing what everybody else does. It's a, it's a nice card, but I don't really see it doing a lot. Maybe later on ranged will matter. I don't really know what any of that's going to mean. But at this moment in time, scratch mana poo. You can just be poo. Now this card comes down as early as turn 1 for 3,000 power, but it's not always going to come down as early as turn 1 for 3,000 power. Sometimes, in fact, at least half the time, it will be coming down as early as turn 2. And for that reason, it just isn't as good as our king, lord, and master, and savior, Buggy the Clown from Blue. We all know that he is the best at being an early drop 3,000 power. Now, as we look at this, however, it does have trigger play this card. So if this card were to end up into your life, your life counter, you could end up playing it when you draw into it. Is that enough? I really don't think so. In fact, it makes it even worse that I'm going to be getting this card from my life, but then that's all I'm going to get. Bao Huang is two for 3,000, just like the previous card. However, it has an effect, which already makes it better. On the play, choose two cards from your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals those cards. This is information, and that can help you. It's not great, but it is slightly better, because at least it has an effect.
And here we are at probably the sexiest artwork in all of purple with Basil mother effing take my money Hawkins. That man just really knows how to shake my... Anyway, it says for four, you get 2,000 power, and that's because he may not be the strongest pirate in the world, but understandably, you get quality and he costs a lot. With that quality, you are going to get Animal Kingdom Pirates, Hawkin Pirates, so you got a little bit of keyword action going there. On play, add one card from your Dawn deck and rest it. This is free, just get extra power, and trigger play this card. Now, this is a trigger I like. This is a trigger that can help you push your game and tilt it into the further uh, region of your end game, of your goals. If your opponent's going to be taking my uh, my life away, then I'm going to want to get more mana on the field anyway. So this is exactly the kind of thing I like to play with. I'm going to actually say that this is... We're going to put Basil Hawkins up here with Jack. I would play this in a deck, at least one or two copies. I really like it now. It is a little steep, but I like the ramping ability. He makes up for it by having a nice ramp. Now, Baba Nuki here is 5 for 7,000. Now, I do appreciate that it, he's going to be a full art. I like when cards are full arts. Now... At 7,000 power, I start to see that this is really difficult to block. Your opponent's going to have to discard uh, a minimum of 3,000 power in order to be able to block this card. I like it. In fact, this is going to be one of those strong cards where you start wanting to play cards uh, just to hit your opponent real hard and heavy. There's not much to say about this card aside from I would definitely throw it into a deck. Now, this is a card I've been excited about for the last two months, and I have been surprised that nobody has been playing with this card. Now, I know that I'm getting ahead of myself because I just got really excited about Black having the ability to reduce the cost of cards that are on the field, so we know this card is going to be pushed over the top when that does come out. However... I already loved this card even without that ability because this is targeting a cost five or less. So you are going to be getting rid of massive freaking hits. You, you look at the previous card, this guy, Baba Nuki, is no longer even a problem anymore because he just killed Hitakairi and Hitakairi basically had death touch. This is a card that I could see going into most decks, and I'm going to throw it right up here. In fact, even higher. I really stand by this card, and with black coming out, it's going to be in a lot of brews. Moving on, we've got Who's Who. This is two for 3,000, so already it's better than the previous because it has an effect. Dawn 1, your turn. If you have eight or more Dawn cards on your field, this character gains 1,000 power. It's all right. It uh, kind of benefits later on. It, it's kind of like a early game, you got 3,000 power. Late game, you got 5,000 power. It's okay. I think I've seen it in a few tournament builds. I'm not too crazy for it. I know it has, univer it has uh, versatility, but I would put it probably around the same area as Crocodile here. I am a fan of it for what it can do, but it's not something that you have to play. It's 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 not bad. It's not in the bottom three tier. It's not in the top three tier by any means either, though. It's a middle-of-the-road kind of card. Next, we're looking at Fukurokaju. This is six cost for 8,000 power. He is from the Land of Wano, Animal Kingdom Pirates, Special Attack. Nothing really else to say about this guy. I love him for mana efficiency. You are getting an extra thousand power for that extra one investment, but by then you probably got a lot of ramp cards that helped you get to that six. I like it. It's not the most powerful card I've seen. I would say it's another middle of the road card. It, you don't have to play this card, but it is good. Yeah, I would say good most times. It just it's something that only put in your deck if if you don't have these top three. You know, like these are the three that you want to brew with. And then this is what you have left over that you don't mind playing. And then this is what you, you're just like, I, I kind of have to play it. But then again, you might look in here and find something really wacky that's just like really fun. And you come out with something really interesting that no one's seen before. So don't don't count cards down here out. It's only this 50 mark where you can start being like, wow, why did they even print this card? Next on our list, we're taking a look at Black Maria. This is a 4 for 5,000, which is probably the most standard 
type of power exchange that I've ever seen. However, for that four for 5,000, you're also going to get a blocker, making this one of the single best cards that I've ever seen for a four for 5,000. Just because I love getting a cheap blocker that can actually do its job and block an attack. It doesn't take much to bump this girl up to a six, seven, eight thousand because she's already at that really nice starting location of five. But after that block, on block, Dawn 1, you may return the specified number of Dawn cards from your field to your Dawn deck. This character gains 1,000 power during this turn. She is able to continuously bump herself up, and it's I like it. I like that she is able to go from 5 to 6, from 6 to 7, if you continuously block with her. And I think that I'm going to actually end up placing her up here. She's uh, not a must-throw in the deck, but if you have her, I'd recommend playing her. She's going to be a lot of fun, and you will not regret cards from this area being in your deck. Now, on to page one. Uh, this is a card that kind of relies on another card to be effective in a special uh, way. I, basically, in a two-card combo, page one, this particular page one, is a really nice must-include in purple lately. However, by itself, Dawn minus one, you may return the specified number of Dawn cards from your field to your Dawn deck. This character can also attack your opponent's active characters during this turn. Uh... That's just power. Honestly, I could see myself putting at least two of that card in any purple deck. I like it. Uh, and for that reason, I'm going to put it up here with Black Maria. I would say that this is where you should uh, play four of this card, maybe. You should play three of this card, maybe. You should play two of this card, maybe. And you could play one of this card, maybe. You know, like, yeah. And now we have Hold'em. Uh, we're kind of ending up in the midway part of our list. But for right now, let's take a look at Hold'em. He is on KO. Add one card from your Dawn deck and rest it. I kind of hope that we get some sacrificial fodder, fodder in the future. Until then, he's not that great uh i would probably put him about here i uh i guess he's so he needs to die and that's the thing is your opponent won't let him die will they he'll just be a dead card that's not really a threat so i don't really like him he's kind of uh, i can see why they made him though he's gonna be better later i hope so for our last card we're going to talk about today, this is X Drake. He is 5 for 5,000. You are going to get that plus 2,000 out of him, and on the play, you can remove a Dawn from your Dawn deck to force your opponent to trash a card in their hand. Um, I'm not too hip on this card. I think it's okay. Normally, you would pay 4 for that 5,000 power, so I kind of miss having a better efficiency for its cost. And because of that plus 2,000, I would probably mostly discard it just for the plus 2,000. And as far as trashing an opponent's card in hand, Jack was doing that better because he got to do that every turn uh, as an option, whereas this is only happening once on the play. This is a very expensive card for its cost. I'm not a fan of it, and I probably would put it right about here in the 50 million range. It's usable, but not super great. So anyway, as you can see, we have a lot more to go through as far as cards that we're trying to get through the entire list. We still have all these event cards, plus the starter decks to go through. And if you join us next time on this channel, we will be doing that as well. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. It's been an absolute wonderful time. Uh, we did get through half of the purple cards, and if you'd like to see more content like this, again, don't forget to subscribe to become a crew member, and if you do join, make sure to hit the bell icon so that you are not left behind on the Grand Line when the ship takes off from port. Until next time, guys, I wish you all safe sails on smooth seas.